there. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to see my plush? <gasps> ah! This is the most adorable Totoro plush in the world that I got from the Studio Ghibli Museum in Japan. I have become obsessed with Totoro and part of this reason is because I've seen the London Play version of My Neighbor Totoro inspired by the Studio Ghibli animation, My Neighbor Totoro. <gasps> I will be spoiling nothing in this video, do not worry. I just wanna give my recount, review, and tell you about the best night of my life. For one thing, it inspired me to spontaneously paint my wall with a giant Totoro on it. You might have seen it in my YouTube shorts. I plan to expand upon that mural. It'll be good, it'll be good. This production is just so mind-blowing amazing. It brings Totoro to life. There is a huge Totoro puppet. <sighs> the production of My Neighbor Totoro was made possible by the collaboration between the Royal Shakespeare Company and Joe Hisashi, who you might recognize as the person who composed the majority of the music for all the Studio Ghibli animations, as well as help from Improbable and Nippon TV. And yes, I'm just parroting what I have learned from this program. Anyway, they all worked together to make this production possible and it was showcased at the Barbican Theater. It also did not have a long runtime. <laughs> That being said, there is worldwide interest in this production, so I have no doubt that it will pop up somewhere else and I really hope it goes to Japan. It needs to be there. Seeing this play absolutely made me fall in love with the character Totoro and the story of Totoro. Beforehand, Kiki's Delivery Service was my absolute favorite Studio Ghibli animation anything. Now I've got to say, specifically the play version of Totoro is my new favorite Studio Ghibli genre. Of thing. Tom and I didn't manage to see it until earlier this month and I just wish I had seen it sooner. <laughs> if I had seen it sooner I definitely would have tried my absolute hardest to get more family and friends to go to it because I know they would have loved it. It is no longer running. <laughs> Many apologies to be talking about something that you can't even see right now but it's just so good. I know it's gonna pop up somewhere else I just know it. Or at the very least I am so hopeful that it goes somewhere else. It needs to go to West End Broadway something in Japan please. <laughs> Just everywhere, everywhere needs to get it. On the social channels for the play, they have announced that you can sign up to a newsletter and that newsletter will be giving out information for future stuff to do with it. So I'm thinking there's gonna be some future stuff to do with it. It's too good not to. I'm a theater kid actually growing up and stuff, mainly because of figure skating. We would tend to skate to songs from musicals because they would tell a story. On ice, that's what you'd want to do for ice shows and competitions and things. You'd want to tell a story through your artistry as well as showcase your skills. Engage the audience! So I have seen a large majority of theater productions, musicals, plays, everything. I've spent my whole life just admiring it and being a huge fan of the content. I just truly love theater and rather than listening to pop music growing up, I was listening to musicals. The Broadway channel was where I was at. <laughs> and My Neighbor Totoro was hands down the best theater experience I've ever had. <laughs> I've never enjoyed a night more in my life. <laughs> and the day I saw it, for all intents and purposes, it was a really bad London day. <laughs> um, it was cold as anything. I was bundled up in my winter weather gear, which basically means I looked messy. <laughs> I was in multiple jackets and then a hoodie and then sweatpants. And I think I wore house slippers. <laughs> The kind of house boots you're not meant to wear outside, but they are so warm. That's what I picked. That's what I picked for the day. <laughs> but my feet were warm. It's good. And it's funny because my American friends and family often ask what London fashion is like because we come from a small town. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you grab as many things that are scarves and hats and gloves and jackets that are clean and you throw them on and you go outside. <laughs> You don't really care if the colors match, you just wanna be warm. And more likely than not, you are running late for your bus or train or other transport that you need. And so you didn't have time to tidy that up. You didn't even bother to brush your hair really because it's gonna be windy outside. You might've thrown it up in a bun. 
baby. And for me, when I step outside, immediately my nose goes red and my eyes go red if it's cold out or wet. So it doesn't matter if I have done my makeup or hair or anything, it's all, that's all gonna go away. So that is my London look. So for all intents and purposes, the day I saw this production, I was not meant to have a good day. It was cold and I don't like the cold weather. I looked like a drowned rat. I was dressed like... I shouldn't have gone outside dressed like that. And we were running late, we were running really late, so I don't even think I got dinner. I might have grabbed a sushi pack somewhere. Yeah, I grabbed a sushi pack, that was it. I had never been to that tube station before and I had never been to that theater and so I felt a bit... It was late at night. <laughs> You're walking. However, from the moment that I sat down and saw the stage, I knew I was gonna have a good night. And then the play started and about two seconds in, I knew it was gonna be a great night. By the end of the first half, I knew that it was a night that I was going to bookmark as a top tier part of my life. <laughs> when we were leaving the theater, I realized it was my favorite day, favorite night ever. Which sounds like a huge thing to say, but honestly, it was my favorite day. <laughs> Like, it had never been better than that in my life. <laughs> and just for reference as well, it was three hours long and it was full of children. <laughs> and you know how kids can be during a movie? They're gonna squirm. <laughs> There's gonna get a point where sitting still just doesn't happen. But during this play, every single kid was just sat quiet watching it, entranced, thoroughly enjoying their time. Well behaved. Every single child. <laughs> like, I think that says enough. That's how good it was. There was an incredible amount of production on just the right elements, the right set elements, the right puppets, and just enough underproduction and other parts to make it charming and play-like and make you have to use your imagination, as well as appreciation for every single cast member and crew. The orchestra as well was not hidden below. They celebrated the orchestra. The orchestra was on stage the whole time in the forest, in the trees. I loved that. The production was very good at setting the scene, letting it feel like the sun had actually just come up or gone down and now it's nighttime. And just using simple elements and transitions to make it feel like there's now a fresh field of grass. They just did an incredible job of actually creating the atmosphere for it. it was so good. Obviously the actors and puppeteers are incredible, orchestra, amazing and the actual puppets themselves immaculate. Could not appreciate those more. And the last thing I want to talk about is the pacing. And I just wanna give this as many gold stars as I possibly can. So much of content and entertainment today has quick pacing, very quick pacing, changes, hyperactiveness. And I'm guilty of this too. I make my painting videos too quick sometimes for everyone and I know it and, but it just happens anyway because I am not a master of pacing, but Studio Ghibli, you hold the cards. What I mean by pacing is taking the time to allow time in the movie for something simple. So like zooming in and letting a minute play of just grass. <laughs> or the food scenes where they're cooking or the characters just looking out a window and just taking a breath. In our daily lives, things are not quick paced all the time. You have slower moments of your day and they integrate that into their stories. And those quiet moments, they're humbling and it brings that realism life to the character. The character is taking a moment for themselves and that is relatable. It also allows the audience to come back down from an escalated moment or tension, drama, whatnot. So when the new exciting scene happens, you can feel the buildup again. You can have that escalated moment and ooh, this is fun and thrilling versus if you were just there the whole time, that's kind of like going down a roller coaster and just always going down the roller coaster. <laughs> I didn't think I would get a chance to see it again because it is a play that is in such demand as well as it was ending really soon. And then Tom surprised me with a ticket for the very last day of their show. I knew it would be cold that day and so I dressed in my best <laughs> just trying to be warm London gear. Before it, I went to my favorite Japanese patisserie in London, Wa Cafe, and I got myself a Japanese strawberry shortcake, which is a vanilla castella cake with whipped cream frosting and the strawberry on top. Then I arrived at the theater an hour early because I knew it was gonna be cold, it was gonna be dark, and I had nowhere else I wanted to be. And I had time to get the merchandise. 
which is basically just like the same picture, but you know what? It's good. I got a kid size t-shirt because that's the only t-shirt they had left. However, it's the largest kid size, so it fits. It's a bit short, but it fits. <laughs> I got their last small hoodie that they had. I feel so sad, but I'm just so happy. <laughs> that's the hoodie. It's, it's just a little symbol, but it's it makes me happy. And the tote bag and the keychain. So pretty. I'm gonna be playing with that all the time. <sighs> I stayed at a hotel that night and I got it a little bit outside of London because it was cheaper. <laughs> I just got ID'd because they thought I was a teenager trying to check into a hotel room. My room is lovely. And then that next morning there was fog, more fog than I'd ever seen. <laughs> I made my way to Windsor Castle. Before the castle opened, I went to McDonald's and I got a toasted English muffin because they have the muffin and the jam and it's nice. And I was not joking about my hair becoming a frizz bomb. It does. And McFlurries were available. So I got one, it was just 8 a.m. but it's fine. <laughs> and I didn't have much time before my next train and so I wasn't able to go inside the castle once it opened, but I was able to see it from the outside and do the gift shop. That was my day, that was my time. Thank you for letting me just rave about it because I just love the play so much. The puppet, I just, I know I'm not even explaining this well enough, but it's hard to explain and there's no images of it. This is kind of similar with the Studio Ghibli Museum in Japan. You're allowed to film the outside of the museum, but the inside is a secret. You're not meant to film on the inside. They do not encourage cameras and they will take your cameras away. <laughs> it's only what they're willing to release and Studio Ghibli and the Royal Shakespeare Company have not really put out much imagery of their production. It's just kind of spreading by word of mouth and everything of how great it is. I will have more to talk to you about Japan in the following weeks and things as well as a huge announcement and other bits. For now though I'm going to be packing for Orlando because it is really cold in England. I'm having my moment where Trips are just not working out for me, but I'm gonna try one more time and tomorrow I'm going to Orlando, so. I love this one because the Totoro is actually just holding the leaf. Here's the guide, by the way. Totoro on stage. There's just so much they have done for this. Look at all their hard work. Thank you to everyone who made this possible because it was the best night of my life. <laughs> and I will see you guys again next time. Bye, goodbye, bye.